Hi Year 11, this is Mrs Lowe. I'm going to be talking to you today about London by William Blake. London was published in 1794, so it's a pretty old poem. Um, and William Blake is one of, if not the most famous English poet, uh, who was pretty radical and very political. He got very set views on socialism, racial equality, and he was uh, a strong objector to the church and its teachings. So in the poem London, uh, we've got a first-person narrator who's describing a walk around the city of London. He says that everywhere he goes, the people he meets are affected by misery and despair. The misery seems relentless and no-one can escape, and not even the young and the innocent can get away from it. People in power, for instance the church, seem to be causing all of the problems and don't do anything to help the people in need. So all the way through this poem, essentially, William Blake is offering us a commentary on his beliefs uh, of society at the time. So here it is. I wander through each chartered street, near where the chartered Thames does flow, and mark in every face I meet marks of weakness, marks of woe. In every cry of every man, in every inference cry of fear, in every voice, in every ban, the mind-forged manacles I hear. How the chimney sweepers cry, every blackening church appalls, and the hapless soldiers sigh, running blood down palace walls. But most through midnight streets I hear how the youthful harlot's curse blasts the newborn infant's tear and blights with plagues the marriage hearse. So, three quotations that stand out for me in this poem are uh, one from line four, which is in the first stanza, which is marks of weakness, marks of woe. What Blake does in this quotation is he, he repeats this idea of marks and this suggestion of marks. And what he's saying is actually that everybody that he walks past, everybody that he sees in London, is marked in some shape or form. So even though we've got repetition in there, you could argue as well that it's a little bit of a metaphor for how people are feeling, what the uh, capital of England is like at this particular time and how people were being treated. So the marks could represent... Uh, the bleakness of their lives, the despair that they're suffering, as well as the fact that there wasn't much hope for those that weren't particularly rich or didn't have a lot of money. Uh, and that everybody was affected and there was no relief from it. So we've got Mark in there three times. He then goes on to say, in every cry of every man. And that idea of every is repeated three times as well, which again highlights the suggestion of everybody being affected by the bleakness and the kind of corrupt society that London was at this time. He talks about mind-forged magic manacles, which is on line eight, uh, which is this idea of entrapment, manacles meaning kind of handcuffs, and the fact that people were trapped by society, trapped by uh, the government, and trapped in the lives that they were, they were being forced to live. Um, as well as this, we've got lots of suggestion about... Uh, children, about young, um, and about people who have no way of being able to get out of this vicious cycle uh, and move in society to, to something that's perhaps a little bit less corrupt. So, in terms of poems that I would connect this with, I think a really good one to look at would be um, perhaps loss and absence, um, and you could look at linking it with exposure or poppies, as well as this, you can look at this idea of negative emotions and this idea of anger, which comes up in war photographer as well. You might also look at individual experience, because again, like we've already talked about, we've got first-person narrator, and also the idea of the power of humans and the power that humans can have in society, which link, link, makes it link really nicely to My Last Duchess uh, and Storm on the Island. Enjoy Year 11.